My goodness. That is a gruesome looking injury to Kevin Ware. He's dislocated some portion of his leg there, Jim. Let's talk about Kevin Ware's injury. Kevin Ware, NCAA tournament, he had a brutal open fractured tibia. Now, look away if you can't watch this injury. This is graphic. Now, the only other time I've seen a, an injury this bad is typically side swiping, high velocity, high impact, where a player is coming in to swipe, side swipe someone's leg, and boom, you crack the tibia, pops out of the skin, or motor vehicle crashes falling off of high, tall buildings, falling off the roof, high velocity, high impact injury. So what happened here? He lands on his leg, and then what you see is half of his tibia sticking out of the skin. So he landed, planted, and went back. Now, typically what would have happened in that situation, you've seen plenty of, uh, of basketball injuries. You land non-contact ACL. You land, sprain your ankle. You twist your ankle. Something happens. Spraining a joint or a knee or an ankle is typically what happens from that position. You get a hyperextension of your knee. You blow out your PCL. You do a non-contact Tack pivot shift, you blow out your ACL. You roll your ankle one way or the other, you get a fracture, you get an ankle sprain, or a really bad grade three ankle sprain. He didn't do that. Why did he break his tibia? Just imagine this is your right. Now, the reason this is the left is fibula is on the outside. So in Kevin Ware's issue, he landed, planted, and broke his tibia. Now, this, is the tibia and fibula. Full length tibia down to the ankle. Full length fibula down to the ankle. This is half, popped. So imagine the bone landing and popping out. You see the tibia sticking out of the skin. So he landed and broke his tibia and that's why you see the double bend. So he had a compound fracture, also known as an open fracture, and that tibia popped out of the skin, ripped the skin, ripped the muscle, and he injured it. Brutal injury. Open fracture in a college athlete, that's a tough injury to recover from. Why did he break his bone in that position? He should have sprained his knee, twisted his ankle. Maybe he had a stress fracture evolving. You know, we know that that's a big risk. Mid tibia, anterior tibia, stress fracture, overworking his leg, pushing hard, maybe some malnutrition, maybe he didn't get enough vitamin D, maybe he's got a thyroid disorder, some kind of a calcium vitamin D deficiency or some other genetic disorder, I don't know. All I know is that should not have happened in a young athlete for a non-contact injury or when it happens, it's pretty darn rare. So open fracture. So that means that his risk of infection is high. We need to get that uh, tibia cleaned up back inside the skin. So the skin needs to heal, the muscle needs to heal, because once that bone pops out of the skin, all the muscle, all the fascia are torn. You're snapping that bone and it's ripping all the muscle and the tissue and the fascia, possibly injuring or bruising a nerve uh, in the meantime because that's just hanging off his leg and stressing and stretching nerves and vessels that shouldn't. He could have had a vascular injury as well. First things first, get him to the ER, get him to the OR, wash out that open fracture. You wash it out, clean out any dirt because there was dirt everywhere. Can you imagine the amount of sweat, dust, and audience grossness that's out there in an open basketball court. People are sweating, eating junk food, and all of that is floating around. Think of all the germs that are out there on an open court, and he blew open his tibia, and his leg, and his muscle fascia, all of that stuff is there. Now, when you do that, 
Breaking a bone like that is like a negative vacuum because you went from a closed environment, burst something open, whoosh, sucks things in. Okay, so that means whatever was outside is now inside. Whatever dust was there is inside. You have to wash that out. You clean it out, you line it up, you rot it. Depending on the uh, level of the injury, most of the times, mid tibia, even in an open fracture, because that's relatively clean open fracture. For all intents and purposes, this was a relatively clean open fracture. Popped open, you wash it out, you put it back, you give him some antibiotics, you rod the leg. What are his risks? How is this different from a regular broken bone? The average tibia, eight to 12 weeks to heal. You, if he's rotted, he's walking right away, as long as it's stable. And his biggest risks are, because of the muscle contusion and fascial tears, because it's open, a little bit longer to recover the muscles. If he had a nerve or vessel injury, that could add to the complexity. But the biggest thing with an open fracture is the risk of infection. Now, since it was a relatively clean open fracture, it was inside out, not outside in, meaning it wasn't like someone's dirty cleat went in and smashed his leg and took dirt inside. It was inside out, so relatively clean open fracture. Risk of infection is still there. He probably had a few days couple of days of antibiotics as long as it was clean and then he's back healing and recovering. Does an open fracture take a little bit longer to heal than a closed fracture? As long as there's no infection or complication, it takes about the same time to heal. As long as the overall and anatomical characteristics are restored, it should heal in the same amount of time. But the risk of a delayed union, non-union, infected non-union, and infection or complications are all higher in that type of fracture. I got bones. I got bones.